Freshman Thurman Thomas is the newest Oklahoma State star. Last week against Kansas State, Thomas became the first and only back to rush for more than 200 yards in a Big 8 game this year. And the Cowboys are bowl bound. But football success means success on defense, too. And quick Leslie O'Neill, number 99, triggers a lightning-fast Oklahoma State defense. O'Neill's unit's defense is the Cowboys' prize. For Missouri, their quarterback, Marlon Adler, is the catalyst. For the Tigers, who have had an erratic, disappointing year. Yet such is the talent of Missouri. They have Oklahoma State's attention and respect. And yes, some of the more knowledgeable fans of Oklahoma State are fearful. It has been more than 50 years since Oklahoma State has played a night game at home, and they're playing a big one tonight, seventh ranked in the country. They're going against upset-minded Missouri. And good evening, everyone. I'm Jim Simpson. Well, you've heard by now, I'm sure, Texas, Iowa, Washington, Florida State, Miami, West Virginia, all lost today. All were expected to win. And that brings us, Paul McGuire, to my question to you. We had a little fear here on behalf of some of the folks at our, uh, Oklahoma State that Missouri coming off the Oklahoma loss would be tough. Now they're beginning to look at each other because they've seen what's happened today and could happen to them. Could happen to them. Jim, I would have to believe that Warren Powers is in the locker room right now telling his team all the teams that lost today. And they're playing the number seven team in the nation, Oklahoma State. And all the other teams that lost in front of them, if they win Oklahoma State, they would move up. They would be less than seven. And I, I know that Warren has got to say, hey, look, we've got it in our hands. We are three, five, and one team. We are better than that. And five of their losses, four of them they were in the game in the last series of downs in the last two minutes of the game going for a score. I just think that Missouri tonight has the great opportunity to knock this team off. But don't you think Pat Jones is in the Oklahoma State dressing room saying, look at all the fellas got knocked off today and you better watch your P's and Q's and let's get out there and play hard. I think, it, again, I think both coaches will remind their players of what's happening and what's happened today. And it's important when you take a look at the big teams, the number one and two teams and three teams in the nation are getting knocked off. And they have the chance they can sit back. Pat Jones is saying to his team, hey, look, we're seven. We could be three or four. <laughs> Take a look at it. Quarterback Rusty Hilger has changed Oklahoma State fans' ideas about the forward pass. He is a good one. And an offense that usually runs the ball. He got the 29th and last scholarship offered as a freshman, and it's the only scholarship offer he got. But he's a good one. And we ask Rusty, is there a lot of pressure about playing a team like Missouri that has not played well this year? Yeah, we feel like Missouri is, if not the best 3-5-1 team in the country. You know, we... We're not overlooking these guys. They have a great football team, and we'll probably put more people in the pros than than uh, than we think about putting in the pros. And we're considered uh, a better football team on paper. However, uh, Missouri's a good football team, and we know we can't take them lightly. Well, we've already talked about Leslie O'Neill. I'll just say he is an All-American candidate, and he is lightning fast from his defensive tackle spot. Jim, he will be an All-American. Leslie O'Neill, the quiet man, talking to him. It's amazing to listen to him, but watch him. Number 99, right in the middle of your screen. He goes for the quarterback and most times gets there. We ask him, as a veteran, is it tough to play Missouri, which could knock you out of bowl contention? Well, it's very tough playing against a team that can knock you out of bowl any time. They have one of the top offenses in the nation. I think they're in the top 10. We have to go out there and play our defense and just forget about their overall record because it hasn't been good up to this point. We have to look at their potential and the athlete quality of athletes that they have and go out there and play hard like maybe they're 10-0 or 11-1 kind of team, and I think that will help us out. Strong safety, Rod Brown, fourth in the NCAA in interceptions with six. Now, I talked to Rod Brown, Jim, and I asked him, do you like to play man-to-man -man defense or zone. He said, it doesn't make any difference. Now, here you take a look at it. He's in zone. What he likes to do is make the spectacular catch on defense. But he says, I like to play zone because it gives me the opportunity not to play the man so much, but to watch the quarterback's eyes to get an idea where he's going. The man they talk about with all the cases of the smarts is Matt Munger, a linebacker, the leading tackler. And we ask him, saying, outside of the Big 8, nobody knows Oklahoma State. Is that tough for you? Um, I really don't feel that it, does, it doesn't bother me. I don't think it really bothers a lot of my teammates. 
Um, historically, Oklahoma State hasn't been a real strong football school. Um, we're becoming that. I think, you know, in the future that'll change. I think more than, you know, the recognition right now, more than, you know, uh, national recognition, I think it's more important to most of us to, uh, to have the respect from the guy that lines up across from you. And, and you know, when they play you, they, they know how good you are. And, and uh, I think that's more important to us than anything else. You know, I'll tell you one thing, Munger and O'Neill will introduce themselves to Missouri, not with a handshake. They'll be knocking their socks up. They'll know who's across the line, I can promise you. <laughs> and seven bowl scouts from seven different bowls are here tonight to watch number seven ranked Iowa, I should say Oklahoma State, go against, of course, the Tigers of Missouri. And this is Cowboy Country, and they think the Cowboys are going to a bowl this year. They gotta help themselves tonight. We'll come back with a kickoff in a moment. The temperature here in Stillwater, Oklahoma, 48 degrees, but there is a wind gusting between 5 and 15. It was much, much higher than that this afternoon. Clear skies, no chance of rain. That is Pat Jones. This is his first year as a head coach. He was here as defensive coordinator. He's won seven and lost one in his first year. That's not bad. And on the other side is Warren Powers, and Warren Powers in his first year at Missouri was national coach of the year, and last year was big eight coach of the year. But finds himself now with a team that is free five and one. Missouri has won the toss, but deferred their option until the beginning of the second half. And so Oklahoma State said, we will take the ball. And so kicking off will be the barefooted kicker, and that is Tom Willihan, the freshman out of Carrollton, Texas, and that is Bobby Riley, an exciting return man, who is deep and backing into the end zone to take the kick, and will take it right there, and so it'll come out to the 20-yard line. And Rusty Hilger will be the quarterback, number 12. Thurman Thomas expected to start. He had 206 yards last week against Kansas State, number 34. That's Hilger. Will Timmons, 31, is the fullback. Your wide receivers, Weimer 22, Lewis 8, Harris 83, and Riley 1 will all alternate, bringing in the plays. Barry Hanna 82, the tight end. Shanklin and Blair, the tackles. Burton and Partita, the guards. And Tucker at center. First down from the corner. And that is Thurman. And he gets out across the 25-yard line of the 26. Thurman Thomas. Lenson Staples, Michael Scott, Robert Curry at nose guard tonight. Steve Lachey for the first time this year not making a start. He's got a pinched nerve. Steve Runyon and Justice. Gary Justice, the front five. Bo Sherrill and Tracy Mack are your linebackers. Sherrill 49, Mack 36. Snowden and the rookie Pat Ray are the corners. And Riley and Matichak are the safety. Second down and four. And here's Hilger throwing out here, complete to Jamie Harris. And Harris is knocked out of bounds. It's across it to 40 to 41. First down, Pat Ray, the cornerback, the freshman making his first start, made the stop. This is almost like a screen on the outside. Look at the fake to the inside to his right, back out to his left, but there's blocking downfield. Now, the, if I was Missouri, I'm, I'll talk about after this play. You see Jamie Harris, he picks up the first down, knocked out of bounds by Pat Ray, but the the outside man is also picking off the safety, and I would tell the officials if I were Missouri at this point so they don't start doing it over and over again. Malcolm Lewis left. Well, let's give the ball back to Thurman Thomas, and Thomas gets out to about the midfield mark. It'll be second down and six from there. Bo Sherrill over to make the tackle, and also coming up was the strong safety, Cameron Riley, number 48. Jim, 31 is, is the fullback, Timmons. Now, the fullback on Oklahoma State does an awful lot of blocking. Now, watch. His, his job is contained. That's Michael Scott, number 99. He just gets a piece of him, opens the hole. Second down and six from midfield. We're in the first minute of the play from Stillwater, Oklahoma. And again, Thomas with the football, and this time he gets a yard or two. Good play there by Tracy Mack. Number 36 and Michael Scott, 99. Mack is a leading tackler. He is a linebacker, six feet tall, 222, and runs the 40 in 4-4. Four, four. Linebacker. Not bad. <laughs> I'd mean, I, I say I'd play a defense linebacker and, and running back on offense. Third down and four. Ball on the 47 of Oklahoma State. Oh, he better get lined up. They keep moving that tight end. And here's Thomas again, and I think he is shy of the first down. 
Cameron Thomas, a freshman out of Missouri City, Texas, I don't believe got the first down. I think that was Lenson Staples, number 61. And listen to the crowd here. They want him to go. The ball at midfield in the first minute of play. Oh, no, 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 no. And Pat Jones has been around too long for that. Look at this. They're, they're going to kick it in a hurry. And Missouri not even lined up on the field. That's when you should go with a fake. Gary Cooper kicks the ball away. And there's a fair catch called for by Andy Hill. 12.32 to go. First quarter, and Missouri's got the football. Tonight's game from Stillwater, Oklahoma, brought to you by the 4,200 investment executives of Payne Weber at more than 285 offices nationwide. Thank you, Payne Weber. Puts the ball at the 21, first and 10 Missouri. Marlon Adler, number 10. The quarterback, John Red, 29. Santiago Barbosa, 22. The running backs, George Shirtholz, 46. Andy Hill, 84. The wide receiver. And a flag goes down on the very first play. As John Red carries the ball across the 25, Rob Brown made the stop. And I do believe they might have been in motion, meaning Missouri, which would take the ball back to the 16 and erase that six yard pickup. No, no, no. Oh, sir. Sorry, sorry, sir. sir. I thought it was too. No, oh, they'll take, well, I take, see, take, uh, let's say take the penalty. They pick up seven, but I would take the penalty because it'd still be first and five. Sure. James Ham, 40. Rodney Harding, 42. John Washington, 80. Leslie O'Neill, we've talked about him, 99. David Webb, 33, the front five. Ricky Adams, 54. Matt Munger, 90. The linebackers. Wendell Yancey, 48. Mark Moore, 44, the corners. Rod Brown with those six interceptions, 27. The strong safety, Adam Hahn, 14. The free safety. First down and five from the 26. George Shorthose makes his appearance and comes out wide to the right. The first and five. They took the penalty. Nice. I like that. Eric Drain now in as the fullback. Number 33. Fake to red. Here comes Adler. Oh, Still he's got him. Oh, he's got Shorthose down here. And Shorthose has got it and stepped out of bounds. On the 29. No touchdown, but a first down at the 29 of Oklahoma State. Jim, short hose ran. What a beautiful move. And I think that's on Yancey, number 48, the corner. But short hose ran a deep out and then broke it upfield. And Adler held enough time to hold on to the ball. Now watch, you see Adler on a play action. He's going to come out to his right. Now watch him. He'll pump. Now short hose goes up. Here's the throw. Waited long enough. Oh. There's a face mask there. But watch what Short Look at the move he makes to the outside, then upfield, and he steps out of bounds at the 29. Now there's a 35, the 30, and we can't see it because of the head's there, but obviously the official was right on it. Look at the hands he exhibited there, too. Rain is a flanker to the right. The other two wide receivers are left. That means John Red's got the football, and John Red's got yardage inside the 25 yard line. He is dragged down as he gets to about the 23 yard line. Tackle made there by John Washington, number 80, with Rodney Harding, 42. No score, 11 47 to go, first quarter. John Red last week did not have a good game. Nobody really did, he, but he's the only man on the Missouri team that's had two 100 yard days. George Horthose comes back in. He is the lone wide receiver to the left. They've got two tight ends in and two running backs. On second down, there's the fake to Drain, the pitch to Redding, Red, and Red is knocked out of bounds with little or no gain. Knocked out of bounds by Wendell Yancey, number 48. Oh, it'll be third down. And about four, well, it's going to be less than that. Third and about two, Paul. And they're staying with the two tight end situation. And now, what are they doing? They're bringing short hose out. They've been bringing in the McBride. plays with McBride and short hose. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm looking at is they got two tight ends, Davis and Tedford. This is running. This is a running situation, but they may play action. Third down and short. McBride, the man in motion, and Eric Green is dragged down by James Ham, number 40. And it's fourth down and decision time for Warren Powers. Already on the field comes Brad Burdett, a field goal kicker. No decision. All right, here goes Drain. The handoff is there, but they're sitting right in the hole. James Ham, number 40. No place for Drain to go. That's just good play by the defensive end. Jim, you know, we talk so much about the 5-2, 3-4, 4-3. 
they use it. They call it ham and web as defensive ends, but actually they are linebackers. A 38-yard field goal attempt, and this is well within Burdick's range. He is almost automatic from here. He's made some notable misses. Walked from 38 yards out. It is no good. And he misses again. And with 10.35 to go, Brad Burdick usually duck soup for him, but he fails, and there's still no score here at Stillwater. Burdick is a right-footed soccer-style kicker. Now watch when he hits the ball. He's got his head down. He looked up quick, but he hooks the ball. He knew it. He knew it from the time he kicked it, and he missed it. Jamie Harrison motion. And Thomas with the football and a couple of yards only. That is about all. Good play made there by Robert Curry. Now, Curry tonight is at the nose guard. He is normally a tackle on the right side. But with Steve Lachey suffering a pinched nerve, Curry has moved to the nose, and Runyon has taken over Curry's job at right tackle. And the feeling is that Curry may be more at home as the nose guard. Well, that's what Warren Power says. He is, that's his natural position, his nose guard. And they're going to find out tonight. Second down and eight. They're running Thomas a lot, aren't they? And he doesn't get too far. That is Curry again. Over to make the stop, along with Bo Sherrill. And it'll be third down and long, about seven. Paul Blair, the right tackle, number 72. Now look at his job is to hit on Scott and move Scott whichever way he wants to go. Now he does take Scott out of the play, but as you said, number 66 Curry is the man that makes the play. That's two tackles in a row for Curry, the nose tackle. Maybe he does have a home. Terry Weimer wide to the right, number 22, and Jamie Harris wide to the left, number 83, on third down and six. And here's Hildy. Oh, he's just got his man sitting out there waiting, but they're waiting for him. Pat Ray puts him down. Ken Zachary had no chance at all peeling out of the backfield. And now Oklahoma State will have to kick the ball away. Jim, this looks like a busted play. I think it was supposed to be a screen over here, but the linemen never get out. Just take a look. And then there's Zachary sitting out there all by himself. Lenson Staples is the man, number 61, that makes the tackle. Good play defense. Andy Hill is the man you're looking at. He's the deep man as Kerry Cooper will kick the ball away. Left-footed kicker. Chance for, well, it's taken by the up man. Right there at the 46-yard line. So Missouri in the scoreless ball game will have the ball nearly at midfield. Missouri won this game last year, coming from down 10 to nothing, and they've won 20 of the 30, but Oklahoma State has been very successful in Lewis Stadium winning five of the last six. Now from the 46-yard line, Missouri, which had a chance at a field goal, did not make it. Goes on the offense again. Drain remains your fullback. Barbosa not in there. Drain is okay, and John Red carries the ball and carries the ball right at a man who's just playing there beautifully, John Washington, who shows amazing quickness at the nose guard spot out of Houston, Texas. Jim, we talked about Leslie O'Neill, the All-American. It should be an All-American. Watch what he does. He doesn't make the play, but watch what happens. He, they're blocking back on him. That's Greenfield that blocks back, but watch. He slips the block. He's in a position to make the play. A gain of a yard, second down, and nine, and three wide receivers are out with Drain. Alone remaining setback. Quick go across the middle, and it is intercepted by Ricky Adams. Ball is bounced up in the air, and Adams, the legal linebacker, makes the interception. All right. Not only does Adams knock the ball up in the air, but he also makes the interception. The, the play was to Troy Davis, number 88. But just take a look at it. There's the ball popped up in the air. There's Davis going downfield. But look what Adams does. Now he just waits on it, makes the catch. That's heads-up defense. Well, defense has been averaging four and a half points a game for Oklahoma State. Here goes Thurman Thomas and slips, and he is hit as he gets to the line of scrimmage. Michael Scott, the man in on the tackle, along with Bo Sherrill. Scott, 99. Sherrill, 49. And it'll be second down to nine. Jim, Missouri sitting in that defense, and they're, they're, they know that Oklahoma State runs the ball, and they're going to run the football. But I think what's going to happen now, Rusty Hilder is going to have to throw a, a pass downfield sometime. Here it comes. Hilder throws, and Hilder has his man, Jamie Harris. And Harris is very close to the first down. And they now have the way they're marking it. Now he has the first down at the 36-yard line. Okay, you saw some scores there. The first I know is a shocker if you haven't seen it. USC did knock off Washington and out of the number one spot. 
BYU rolling along over San Diego State. Nebraska up there knocking off Kansas today. Texas got beaten. Florida State got beaten. Miami led 31 to nothing at the half over Maryland and got beaten. And now we take a look at Herman Thomas. And Thomas picks up yardage down about the 31. It is second down. Oklahoma rolled over Colorado, Ohio State by beating Michigan next week and now take over the Rose Bowl spot since Iowa lost today to Michigan State. Florida manhandled Georgia. That was a surprise. Army lost to Boston College. Doug Flutie in the all time passer. Ella Hughes struggled past Alabama. And now Hilger carries the ball and Hilger's got the first down down near the 20. Bo Sherrill makes the stop. But Oklahoma State is on the move after the Ricky Adams interception. Yeah, Elger keeps the ball, but just take a look at right here. Watch what happens. See Burton, number 66. He sees the big guard pulling out. When he pulls up into the hole, the hole, the natural hole is there. There's the first down. Heads up by the quarterback. Elger to throw and turning around and not in time to make the play is Bobby Riley number one a sophomore out of Stroud again the story about Rusty Hilger he got the last that was the 29th scholarship offered his freshman year by Oklahoma State he took it because that's the only scholarship offer he got to play football anywhere he's built himself up by 40 pounds if he go to bowl as expected to be the first Oklahoma State quarterback to go to three consecutive bowl games and now here goes the freshman oh he's got some moves Thomas all the way down for the first down at the 10. Thurman Thomas, 206 yards last week and running well tonight. Jim, this is excellent blocking by the offense. Now, they kick down the tackle. They kick out the defensive end. And just take a look. When Thomas sees that hole, there it is to the outside. No one really to bother him on the outside. And he picks up the first down. I think he picks up the first down. Well, they're going to check on that. Mack and Matichak made the stop. And while they come out here to take this measurement, we have a chance to tell you that J.C. Lauterbach is our referee tonight. The umpires Frank Gaines, Tom Ehlers is the head linesman. The line judge is Paul Brown, and they've got it. The field judge is Gerald Kleinsmith. Mike Borgard is the side judge, and the back judge is Dan Upson. Well, Oklahoma State with its best offensive tonight. We've got 6.32 to go first quarter, and there is no score. But it's a first down and 10 to go for Oklahoma State. All set up by the battered ball up in the air by Ricky Adams. He hauled it down for the interception. That is Jamie Harris, the man in motion. And it is Thomas again. Not much there this time. Got a yard or two. Knows the ball inside the 10-yard line. The man getting up having made the tackle. Looked like it was Runyon, number 92, who peeled back from his tackle spot. Herman Thomas already has 37 yards. Second down, eight to go for the first, and about eight and a half to go for the touchdown. Two wide receivers, both wide left. Hilger rolling that way. Hilger throwing, and Harris can't hold on to it at the one yard line. Turned around. Is picked up by Matichak. Good free safety. Jamie, Jamie Harris comes in motion and he looks like he's going towards the post, towards the goal line, straight ahead. But he breaks to the outside, off a of block. But look at he has to turn, but the ball does hit him in the hands. Now, gotta, you got to understand something else. It's cold tonight. 70 here yesterday, but not now. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> it is third down and long, third and eight. Hilger back again, throwing right across the middle, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, who is Malcolm Lewis. Well, they've had a couple drops on Hilger now, who deserves better than that, and so Larry Roach is coming on. And now as Missouri tried to miss the field goal from 38 yards, Roach will try one from 25 yards. Ball is up. And we have our first score. Oklahoma State 3, Missouri nothing. Missouri gets the ball back, and Missouri doesn't look bad, does it?
Larry Roach has just kicked the 25 yard field goal and will kick the ball off deep. Our two men, Cliff Monday, number one, and the very dangerous George Shorthose. Ball is taken across the 20 yard line. And I'm just saying now that to put Mickey Miller in there as a kick return man, Paul. He was not one that was supposed to have gone in there, but Mickey Miller, a reserve defensive back, did return the ball. The ball is at the 23 yard line. And now let's see what Marlon Adler and company can do. A big play has been a pass to short hose that set up the field goal attempt. That's the fullback, and this fellow's got speed, Eric Drain, and gets across the 30-yard line and is dragged down there by the free safety, Adam Hines, and the cornerback, Mark Moore. Jim, even though Adler threw that interception when Adams intercepted at number 54 for Oklahoma State, he was throwing to Tony Davis. If he, if, don't go away from that play because Davis was open. All he has to do is get the ball up higher and just lead him because there was no one on him. Second down and short, about a yard and a half. Oklahoma State leads 3 0 first quarter. There's Drain again. They barely got the handoff away, but Drain's got the first down to the 45 yard line. Hanging on to him is Adam Hines, number 14. Jim, they ran to the right side. Llewellyn 64, Clay 77. Just take a look at Drain. Almost gets tackled in the backfield. That's Harding, number 42, that had a piece of him. But when you get the ball to Drain, Drain is an exciting runner and a tough runner. But he's also a 4 4 6 runner. Used to be a tailback, now in a fullback. Wide to the left goes Adrian McBride. Andy Hill to the right. Close down from the 45. And that's Drain again with the ball, picking up six yards. Harding, the man getting up number 42, made the stop. Along with a little help of Matt Munger. But all of a sudden, Missouri is beginning to move the ball. They are moving the ball, and they're moving it straight ahead. There's really not a lot of cross blocking up front. That was Phil Greenfield, number 53. He's get up and he's shaking it up. Somebody might have stepped on his toe. They're trying to wave here. That's working all right. But Eric Green, it's a tough football player. If they get him in that second there, I don't know if anybody back there that can catch him. Second down and five to go. Wide receivers are both left. Long count by Adler, maybe checking off. In any event, Drain gets the ball, flags go down, and they've got Drain. Gets to the 49, but flags went down. There's the wave that's become so popular. Many say it started up at the University of Washington. Well, they didn't have much to wave about today. Offside, charged against Oklahoma State. Jim, it looks like they're lining up offside, and I think it may, you know, up in the nose tackle, John Washington, number 80, is getting a little bit too tight towards the center. That should be and is first down in Oklahoma State territory at the 44. Our score is 3 0 Oklahoma State. Missouri, what, ran a dozen plays last week against Oklahoma, were already down 21 0. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little bit better for them than that tonight. Andy Hill wide to the left. Short hose flanked in between him and the tackle on the left side. On first down, Adler's going to throw. Adler's got the time to throw, hitting the crossing pattern, and as his man, that is short hose, and that's the first down inside the 25 yard line. The market right at the 25. Short hose has shown us something tonight, but why not? He is their leading receiver. And that is his 32nd catch of the year right there. All right, let's look at the blocking. Greenfield is 53, 64 is Newell, and the blocking is up in the line of scrimmage. Greenfield had John Washington, number 80, on the ground. But when you look at this pass play to short host, Jim, the, you know who's covering him? 54, Adams, the linebacker. You cannot put a linebacker on short host. Not with a man who runs the 40 and under 4-4, 4-3-7. Fastest man on the field, probably. First down, and Adler pitches the ball back to Red, and he's got nowhere to go. Picks up two down to the 23 yard line. Now to the second down and eight. Jim, there's a classic example of running the quarterback option into the weak side of the field from hash mark 
because you're running into one third of the field. And what happens is Red runs out of room. Now, the quarterback did a good job by getting the ball off Adler, but by the time he got it to Red, he was already at the, at the sidelines. He picks up two yards. Ball is on the 23 yard line. Three and a half minutes to go in this, the first quarter. Missouri down by three on the 25 yard field goal by Burdick of Oklahoma State. Adler. Rods Green and has nowhere to go and Ricky Adams makes the play again along with Matt Munger. Adams is starting over Krebs who has a bad knee. And the former Hutchinson Junior College man who was there just a year ago made the big play. Jim take a look again what I'm talking about. Now here you're going into the sideline. Now look where Red is 29. Here comes Adler to the outside. If he pitches the ball Red is already almost out of bounds. They had no choice but to keep the ball. Adams makes an, a super play by the defensive linebacker, but there is no place to run it. If you're going to run that play, go wide with it. Third down 11. You think they're looking at short hose again? Nope, they're looking across the middle, and it was almost picked off by Rod Brown. Almost had a seventh interception. Well, they said that Rod likes difficult catches. That one wasn't that difficult, and he couldn't hold on to it. Ball got to him in a hurry. They're trying to throw the ball at Davis, number 88, and watch Rod Brown. Now, Davis is checking out. Yeah, look at Rod Brown. He's reading quarterback's eyes. He had that time man-to-man -man on the tight end. Watch, watch him. Watch Brown. He's looking at the tight end. Now he's looking at the quarterback. He sees the ball come in. Well, that's a terrific reaction. That's why he has six interceptions in fourth in the nation. Burdett missed from 38 yards out, and now Brad will try one from 43 yards out. The tie of the game. From 43 yards out, and it is way off to the right, and they have failed again, and it still remains three to nothing. A reminder, next Saturday at noontime, Penn State at Notre Dame. And then Paul and I'll be down in Auburn, and Georgia at Auburn at 7.30 Eastern time. By the way, they tell us that if Penn State could beat Notre Dame, it's off to a bowl. And they tell us that Georgia and Auburn each have a chance, even though Georgia really took it on the chin from Florida today. Mm. But Texas took it from Houston. Washington took it from USC. Big day. And here's the youngster again. This is, well, that's not Thomas. That's Charles Crawford in there. Another sophomore out of Bristow, number 32. And Gary Justice made the stop. Them and Thomas has run extremely well, but they've got some good tailbacks, and they got to play them. Thomas, Charles Crawford, and Sean Jones, who's carried the ball more than anybody. We haven't seen him yet tonight. <laughs> that makes the coach feel good. We've got all those players that can haul it. 2-10 to go. First quarter. And it's second down and six. And Hilger, he's been playing well tonight, and throws well there. And that's the first down. And that looks like Jamie Harris down the bottom underneath Bo Sherrill, the linebacker. And that's who it is, and that's the first down. Move the ball to the 46-yard line of Oklahoma State. Well, that time, Snowden, who was the cornerback, I think they had short and long, and with the back coming out of the backfield and held him a little bit, Jamie Harris circles in front of the, the safety man. He's wide open. That's Pat Jones, first year's head coach. Having a great year. His team is ranked number seven. There's Hilger handing off to Crawford. There goes Crawford. Crawford first down inside the 40-yard line. Tripped up back there by Curry, the nose guard, who went all the way back to make the tackle. Along Watch the Paul Blair, Jim, 72. The tackle coming on. He's pulling on the sweep. He just gets a block to the outside and crunches Bo Sherrill, and that opens up the hole for Crawford. First down from a 39-yard line, last minute and a half of the first quarter. The Cowboys leading by three. Give the ball to Crawford again. Not that much this time, but he does get inside the 40 to about the 37. And call it second down and eight. Tracy Mack made the stop. Number 36, the senior linebacker. Well, Missouri's had a chances tonight, Paul. Two field goals, not of astronomical proportions. Uh, one of 43, one of 38. They didn't make either. Uh, Oklahoma Jim, State has made it. Burdett kicked one to the left, and he tried to compensate for the shot, and he kicked one wide to the right. Second down eight. Hilger. Oh, he's man, he's trying to get the ball to Bobby Riley. Just simply fell down. The pass was terrific, but Bobby Riley took a tumble as the ball was in the air. Nobody touched him. 
I think what's going to happen is that Hilger's going to have to, when he sh throws that short out, we saw it on the last drive before they kicked the field goal. He threw one out to Lewis on the outside, and he's throwing that ball so hard, and it is cold. He's got to wait till his, till his receivers make that move before he throws the ball. I know it's supposed to be a timing pattern, but it's not working right now. Let's watch 96, Eric McMillan on defense. It's a freshman they just put in there on an obvious passing play, and that ball is not caught. Not caught, intended for Jamie Harris. No flags, and it's fourth down. I say that they took out uh, Gary Justice and put in Eric McMillan. He's got three interceptions and four sacks, and has broken up four passes, but he never had a chance there as the pass has gotten off and Harris couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, well, that was good coverage, though. Oh, yeah. Cooper to kick the ball away, and Hill is a deep man. That put a kicker. Well, that's going toward the sideline, and let's see where it goes out. And it's marking at the three. Terrific kick by Kerry Cooper, the freshman out of Broken Arrow, and Missouri is in the hole. 37 seconds to go in the quarter. They've got the ball, and they'll now mark it at the four. I'd like to remind you that tomorrow, Sunday, November 11th, at 7 o'clock Eastern time, the Kapalua International Championship. Now, that's golf from the island of Maui. And that'll be here on ESPN. Jim, they said Mike Hudson, who was a deep defensive back for Oklahoma State downfield, and he just caught the ball. You're allowed to do that if nobody's there, if you're not interfering with the other team. Trick is to do it on a kickoff. <laughs> if you can do that, look. Nev Gray never has a chance. Never has a chance. There's that man that we have talked a lot about. But the big play was made by Thompson. All right, just take a look at it. There's no place to go. The man who really messes the play up is Harding, but Thompson, 91, comes in and makes the play, but Harding got to the blocker's knees. There was no place to block for Drain. They make the play by Thompson, and now they're back where, where they marked it. At the three? At the three, and I think they're going to let time run out here in the first quarter. And that'll give uh, Marlon Adler a little time to do some talking. Oklahoma State leads by three into the first quarter. Stillwater, Oklahoma on a Saturday night. I'm Jim Simpson with Paul McGuire. We begin the second quarter. It's 3-0 Oklahoma State. Missouri has missed two field goals, and now they've got a second down and 12 from their own three-yard line. Adler at his own end zone, throws it out to the sidelines, go across there, and it is complete. And to the tight end, Tony Davis. And Davis, I believe, has got the first down, and that's a big play. I said, don't go away from that tight end, but look at the protection. All right, that's Greenfield there. Look at Greenfield. He is handling John Washington all by himself. He's going to get some help by Llewellyn, number 64, but really didn't need it. And that, I'll tell you, that's a plus. When you have a center that can handle the nose tackle all by himself, Jim, that frees the other lineman to help out, and especially when you've got a guy like Leslie O'Neill, 99. Short Hose and McBride both come to the left on first down from the 15-yard line. Fullback Grain does not get much. Looked like Ricky Adams down at the bottom, along with Matt Munger and Mike Hudson. Ooh. What's that? You just discovered the first quarter statistics? No, you, you look, it's, it's a three point game. There's really nothing that interesting in it except Oklahoma State only throwing for 37 yards. Missouri will have to put the ball up to win this football game. Bilger had some dropped on him. He looked sharp tonight. I think so. Second down at about six. Ball on the 19-yard line. Now this is Red, and Red is going to pick up the first down. Brown in on the tackle, as you can see. Jim, this is a tough play to run, because watch. Now the quarterback has to go all the way back to the halfback, which is Red. That means that the offensive line must get their blocks. Munger made the tackle at the 27-yard line. Now oh, Red started out and then said, nope, I'm not the man to come out. Andy Hill, the wide receiver, is to come out. Close ball game. Missouri playing good ball, and Oklahoma State the favorite. 
has looked good and uh, but they dropped some balls but here's a ball thrown out here all by themselves and that is to Tetford another tight end so the big plays on this drive when they're backed up to the two yard line to Tony Davis to get him a first down and now to another tight end Pat Tetford yeah but I'll tell you there's a guy Eric Drain in the backfield he's going to get a super block watching him to the right of the screen if we can still see it look at that block by Drain gives the quarterback Adler time to throw the ball at Tetford and there it is that's a good catch <laughs> That's to the tight end now. They went to Tony Davis. Now they're going back to the other tight end. I like it. Ball on the 40-yard line. First down. Missouri on the drive. Remember, it began on the two. Adler. Adler holds on to the ball, and Adler's close to a first down at midfield. Moore and Hines make the stop. Now, what? Point I made before in the first quarter. This time, Adler runs the quarterback option to the wide side of the field. He has enough time. He has read behind him that he can drop the ball off, too, if he has to. But the hole was open. Adler picks up nine, almost 10 yards. He picked up nine yards on the play. But that's running that, that quarterback option, Jim, wide side, where you have enough time now to look at the defense and string them out. Now they're going to bring in the sticks again. The Cowboys of Oklahoma State are, well, practically assured of a bowl. As you can see, didn't quite make it. The question is, which bowl, by a set of circumstances, they could conceivably win the Big Eight and wind up in the Orange Bowl. They would like to be in a November 1st date. The Blue Bonnet Bowl is stated publicly. It's one here. They had them last year when they beat Baylor down there. They said, we want them back. So uh, they're going to go to a bowl. The question is which one. And by winning, they can help decide that themselves. Second down short. Grange got the first down. You can see Washington and O'Neill dragging him down. Numbers 80 and 99. And mark the ball at the 46-yard line of Oklahoma State. Great drive by the Tigers of Missouri. Taking the ball to the 46. A little bit of trivia. I've done a lot of Missouri games in my time, but I had not realized that back during the Revolutionary Day, or I should say the Civil War days, they thought that their town of Columbia was going to be raided. They hold up in a stronghold. They called themselves the Columbia Tigers. The Civil War forces never came, but when they named their school teams, they named them after the Tigers of Columbia, the Missouri Tigers. Then. There's Adler, and there's the pitch back to Red, who slips and falls. Was that a busted play at the line of scrimmage, or was just a little stutter step by Adler? It was just a stutter step. They were going down. Everybody carried out their assignments. You saw Red going down the line of scrimmage behind him. And they were running out of room again. Jim, it's amazing. When I'm looking at Oklahoma State's defense, they're putting four men up on the line of scrimmage. Okay? And their linebackers, they're lining off almost six yards, five yards from their defensive line, almost six yards from the ball. There's a big gap between the linebackers and the defensive line. Second down and 13 to go. Adler, look out, Adler. There's a flag down as Adler goes down. The flag went down. Adler was taken down by Harding and Ham. And it could be holding. But it's a flag down downfield, too. And coming across field is Andy Hill saying that he was held and pointing toward Oklahoma State. That's what he's signaling his bench. But let's see what uh, Laudermill, Lauderback and company come up with. This one of those offsetting deals? One against them? Offsetting penalty? That's what it's going to be. Holding on either side. That's holding there. Now, you stop holding. it here by pointing that way. <laughs> <laughs> and take it back. And it is still second down and 13 from the 44. There's Pat Jones. Talking to officials. And he wants an explanation of what happened. There is a likable man, never in the spotlight before. High school coach, assistant coach all around, graduate of Arkansas. Didn't play much football there because had ankle injuries. A likable young man. In his first year as coach at Oklahoma State. Second down, remember, 13 to go. Three to nothing, Oklahoma State. Missouri's got the ball. Adler has the time, delivers the ball. Short host makes the catch. First down inside the 25-yard line. Yancey and Hines knock him out, but Shorthose is having quite a night, and the night is young. Drain gets another block. Eric Drain, number 35, the 33, the fullback. He gets a super block to the right of the quarterback. Here it comes. That's Ham coming out, looking enough to give the quarterback time to throw. 
You heard so much about short holes. Watch the concentration in hands. He's got to turn completely around to catch this ball. Look at this. That's concentration on the football. That's a super catch. That will point out again that this drive started within Missouri's own five-yard line. What well, has caught three balls for better than 80 yards. There's Adler. He's having a good night. Puts the ball up and out there to his tight end Tetford at Tetford. It's down to the 15-yard line. Run out of bounds by Adam Hines. And it'll be second down and one. Ricky Adams also in on the play. What a drive put together by the Tigers of Missouri. Three drives. I mean, this is the third one. Two of them, two of them they didn't come away with field goals. They missed them, but this is their third drive. But it started as a two. You bet. And, it, and the thing about it is what they're doing, that time with Tedford coming across 85, he was the left tight end. They're running him underneath the linebackers, which is forcing them to cover the tight end with the linebackers because the safeties are leaving, and that's leaving the tight end open. And Oklahoma State is number four in the nation in total defense, and Missouri's running right at them. There's Adler, not much there, not much there. Good play made by David Webb, the end on that side, number 33. That may be enough for the first down. All right, here comes Adler down the line of scrimmage. And what he didn't want to do, and this is heads up, you don't want to pitch back and lose the yardage because you only had a yard to go. They did pick up the first down. Adler sees the hole, and that's heads up football by the quarterback. And coming up the 12th play on this drive, it started inside the Missouri 5. 3 0 Oklahoma State, the Tigers of Missouri moving. Second quarter, 10 minutes left. And that is Red, and Red has clear sailing inside the 10 yard line. Down to about the seven yard line. Tackle made there by Ricky Adams. All right, we're looking at John Red come through the hole, but what's happening again? Now the linebackers are so far off. Watch how long it takes the linebackers to get to Red. He's already through the hole. He's already picked up five yards. Now Adams, the linebacker, gets to him. When the linebackers, Jim, are, are, are lining up that far, you run a play action like that draw shows you pass, first of all. That freezes the linebackers like six to seven yards off, and now they have running room. Second down and three. The ball is on the seven-yard line. Adler got a little, nope, not quite. But it's going to be first and goal to go, that's for sure. He cut it up there. It looked like he had a lot of room. Webb was there. O'Neill was there. Munger is there. But so is the first down there for Missouri. Inside the two-yard line. Jim, the linebackers again, we're talking about it because we're going to keep showing it throughout the course of the game. The linebackers are lining off almost six yards off. Now Can't the ball. Do it now. That's right. <laughs> now the ball's at the one. I wonder where the linebackers are going to be. Let's take a look at Munger. Munger's five yards in the end zone. You don't even see the linebackers in the picture. There's Drain. Drain, touchdown. And Missouri goes in front. What a drive of about 96 yards. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Munger makes the play, but he has to come so far to make the play. Now, watch where 90 is. He's five yards in the end zone. He's got to come up almost five yards to make the play. When he does that, the only place he's going to hit the fullback drain is at the goal line. He's already scored. Well, Brad Burdett now may be able to make a kick. Poor guy has tried from 38 and 43 yards out, missed left and right, and now he has got a point after conversion attempt. To make it seven to three, Missouri. It is six to three at the moment. And that is good. And with 8.56 to go in the first half, Missouri leading Oklahoma State seven to three. Chance to see Tom Willahan for the first time. Paul and I've not seen him. Yes, he is barefooted. He is a freshman out of Carrollton, Texas. And we've been looking for him to punt because he has a punting average of almost 52 yards. And you can see the man deep back there is Bobby Riley. But uh, what a hand is supposed to have a big foot. And that's going to go out of the end zone and will come out. All right, let's take a look at the play now. You see the linebackers are not in the play, but watch Drain. He's tough and strong, and by the time Munger hits him, it's right at the goal line. We'll keep you up to date on that. All of the game at 7-3. It has been a shocking day of upsets, and Oklahoma State does not want to be listed among the number tomorrow. And now Rusty Hildren company will try to get something going. 
They're down by four, but very early in the ball game. And there goes Thurman Thomas. And Thomas gets about six out to the 26-yard line with Robert Curry, number 66, hanging on. Well, the Payne River balloon is here again. They followed us all the way to Stillwater, Oklahoma. And we'd like to thank them for bringing along and kind of, well they're firing things up for us aren't they we could use some of that heat they used to get the balloon up in the air up here in the booth just on my <laughs> feet just on my feet <laughs> second down and nearly five to go and here comes Thomas this way and man he was within a step of a big play it's going to be third down and short but he was within a step of a big play Bo Sherrill put him down now take a look at this 96 yards Six minutes and 41 seconds, 14 plays before Drain, but Missouri in front, 7 3. Third uh, down and about a half a yard. The officials are taking a timeout because Thomas is hurt, number 34. Come on. He is a good one, 206 yards, as we said last week. He's the freshman, but they've got Crawford behind him, who's already played. And Sean Jones, who is available, has a rib injury, so it's Crawford that's coming in. Number 32, Crawford is a sophomore to Bristow, Oklahoma. Third down and about a half a yard. First time in 40 years that Oklahoma State has been in the top 10. But they did play in major bowls back in the 40s. Lachey is now coming at nose guard. He has a pinch nerve. They didn't expect him to play. And that is Crawford carrying the ball for the first down. Now Lachey, remember we told you, had a pinch nerve, so he did not start. Curry did. Runyon started the tackle spot for Curry. Well, as a result of something or other, they have decided Lachey is ready, and he is back in at the nose tackle spot, or nose guard spot, and Curry has moved back to his tackle spot. And we've got a man hurt down on the field. And so while the man is hurt down on the field, we will take timeout. 7.50 to go, first half, 7-3, Missouri leads Oklahoma State. We just put Steve Lachey back at the nose guard spot and apparently his right leg has been injured. They put it in the plastic bag and I guess Curry will go back and Ronnie will come back. All right, here comes Timmons, 31. If I think it's at the end of the play, he's the one that lands on Lachey's leg. Now, there's Lachey at the bottom. Now, watch, watch his right leg. You see it coming up? Now, watch what Timmons does. It goes underneath him. They've got him on a stretcher. Well, they didn't, they didn't take the stretcher. No, they, they didn't take the stretcher, but you can see what they've done to his right leg. He just got back in there. He had had pinched nerve problems, but this could be perhaps more serious. Naturally, from here, we don't know. They'll take x-rays and all the rest of that, and we'll try to get the word to you as soon as we know. In any event, it is first down for Oklahoma State, 7.41 to go. They have Thurman Thomas on the sidelines and Charles Crawford in his tailback. Elger still with the ball, gets the ball out, delivers it across the way, and that's a good catch across the way by Hanno, the tight end. And Hanno's got the first down across the 40 yard line. Cameron Riley put him out of bounds. All right, we're running play action pass. Now look at the backs go one way. Now this is a rollout. You've got, you've got people blocking out in front of you. Bertita's out there. Now here's a pass to Hanna. No chance for Riley to get out there because when Hannah breaks out to the outside, the linebackers don't get there, and you're one-on-one. -on -one. These tight ends are back in business tonight for both teams. First down, the ball on the 42-yard line. Five started on the 20. Hilger. Hilger going deep, and Jennifer Harris, he's got him deep, got the ball. He beat Snowden badly. Ran right by Wallace Snowden, the senior, number 40. First down at the 14-yard line. You're right about Jamie Harris running by him, and he just outruns the football. They're gonna, there's a little bumping downfield. Well, another play action pass in the backfield to Crawford, 32. But Rusty Hilger, just look where he lays this ball out, and Jamie Harris, watch that. He just outruns the football. That's why he stumbled. Snowden had no chance. Ball inside the 14, actually. Bobby Riley is wide to the left. Two tight ends. Dillard on the left and Hannah on the right. And that is Crawford carrying the football and the flag goes down and that could be holding. Which would be a blow. I tell you, Rusty Hilger and Marlon Adler tonight at quarterback each has looked terrific. 
pinpointing their passes, ability to run the football. That's holding. That's a 10 yard penalty. A little bit more than six and a half minutes to go in the half. It's 7 to 3 Missouri at Oklahoma State. First down at the 14 now, faced with a holding penalty. And they'll move that ball back. Temperature at game time was 48 degrees. Yesterday afternoon out here watching practice was about 75 degrees. But then it's been a lot colder than this in many places where the game was played today. I'll tell you that. J.C. Lauterbach gives us a holding indication. Move the ball back to the 16-yard line. And call it first down and 12. Timmons remains your fullback. Crawford remains your tailback. Jim, you know no one's covering the tight end? Not right now, anyway. Let's see if Hilger sees that. Hilger looking on a crossing pattern, and there's Jamie Harris again having a great night. That could be a first down. I'll tell you, this is a great throw because there's double, double coverage on Jamie Harris on the outside. Watch where Hilger throws this ball. The safety didn't come up. The corner's playing to the outside. The safety is sitting back. Riley, he had, he had no choice. He's got to wait back. Corner man has got to knock him off. First and goal to go. The nose of the football inside the four-yard line. Oklahoma State seeking to recapture if they can. They've got three backs in there. As Zachary joins Timmons and Crawford. In a power-eye situation. Let's see if they run this way. Crawford leaping toward the end zone does not get it. Out of the second down and a yard or so to go. Well, Missouri had a 96-yard drive. This will have been an 80-yard drive should Oklahoma State pull it off. Crawford jumped a little bit too soon. He, he's a little bit too far for this jump, but he really didn't have a, any choice. He had to get up over the top. And Crawford's thinking, maybe I should have scored on that play. I, I, they'll come back. Same play. There it is. Try it again. Touchdown. <laughs> Charles Crawford gets his fifth touchdown rushing of the year. At Oklahoma State. And gone in the lead. Uh, now Roach will try to up it to 10 to 7. All right. Take a look at it. You see, look at number 31. When you see Timmons go in, we'll show you him later on. Kick is good. 5.37 to go on the half. And it's 10 to 7, Oklahoma State. Both teams have shown an ability to drive the football. Missouri gets it when we come back. Larry Roach will kick off for Oklahoma State. We understand that Lachey has pulled ligaments in his knee. The deep man, Andy Hill, is one. And it looks like Victor Moore is another. Hill on your left and Moore on your right, and that is Larry Roach. And this will be hit. At the two. Comes straight up the field and gets out across the 20-yard line. And it's first and ten for Missouri, but Oklahoma State leads on this touchdown. All right, we've seen Crawford score twice. Take a look at 31, Timmons. His job, Will Timmons, is to get in and knock the defensive end or linebacker to the outside. I think that was Scott 99 that he blocks. And once he does that, look at Crawford over the top. I like the play call, Jim. They ran the same play two times, picked up the yard for the touchdown. Now from the 24-yard line, Marlon Adler comes back to try to get another drive going. Missouri has moved the ball very effectively as they have all year long, most of the time. The up man is Drain, and Drain pounds out to about the 29-yard line. Stopped there by David Webb. Number 90, Matt Munger. Now, again, he's five yards off the line of scrimmage, but look at his job is to come down. <laughs> he's double teamed at the line of scrimmage. That's Petty, number 69, blocking on him. And also, is that Greenfield, the center that's in it? That's tough duty for the linebacker, especially when, when the lineman can get that much of a run at you, and you are off six yards. Gary Roberts, number six, was also in on the play. As 
Gadler on second down has the time, puts it right across the middle, and we have Tony Davis. Well, they've thrown to Thetford and to Davis, and on the other side of the line of scrimmage, Oklahoma State has thrown to Hannah, so the tight ends are getting their share tonight, and that is a first down for Missouri. Jim Krebs is in there. Adams, who made the interception, is out for the moment. Krebs has made the last two tackles. Short hose wide to the right. Two tight ends. Mm -hmm. Short hose is one on one, Jim. That's dangerous. But they give it to Red the table. Hey, look at this cut to the outside. Just a step away. Hines drags him down, but that's another first down almost at midfield. And both ball clubs can move this football. And Oklahoma State will go back again. He is number four in total defense in the country, but Missouri's taking it right to them. John Washington, the nose tackle. Look at the counter the other way. They're just riding, that's Petty, just riding Washington. But you've got to understand something. When you see a play like that, and it looks like Washington's getting blown out, his job is to stunt that way. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that when you're stunting that way and the guard blocks you down that way, there's not much you can do. First down from the 49-yard line, 10 to 7, Oklahoma State. Missouri's got the ball, four minutes, 25 seconds to go in the half. And that is Drain, and Drain is tackled around the ankles as he goes by by Leslie O'Neill and gets down into Oklahoma State territory at the 46-yard line. Big day in football today. If you've not heard, and we've got Sports Center at halftime, they'll tell you about how Washington lost, how Texas lost, how Iowa lost, how Miami led 31 to nothing at the half and lost, how South Carolina won, knocking off Florida State. Big day, and I probably missed some along the way. West Virginia lost. Second down and five. The linebackers are still at a good five yards off the ball, Paul. And Drain just cuts back and gets, well, he may have the first down at the 41 yard line. He was tripped up. He went by by Hampton. And nope, no measurement. John Clay, number 77. We talked about him. That man he's blocking on is Rodney Harding, number 42. Now he gets to his feet. He knows the play is going to his left. Harding falls on the play after about a four yard gain. But when John Clay blocks down, Jim, Jim when you look at this offensive line of Missouri, it's awesome. And it's third down on the yard. And on that play, they brought in short hose, and he's one on one out wide to the right. You'd expect Grain to get the ball. Grain gets the ball, has the first down inside the 40 yard line. I expected much more of a defensive battle. It is not a high scoring game, but it's certainly a game really doing well along the ground. It is, and it's along that offensive front. John Clay again, Llewellyn 64 on that side, but look at Clay. Now, he's just getting to the feet of Rodney Harding, ties him up. When you do that, he goes down, drain goes over the top. Again, this is a big line. First and 10 from a 39 yard line. Adler, look at this. All oh, the tight end couldn't hold on to it. Tony did. And I mean, he had it all the way. Jim, that's the same play they ran when, when Adams intercepted. I said, don't go away from that play because it's open. That time it was open again to Tony Davis. It was wide open. He just drops the football. Here it comes. But just take a look at the blocks right there. There's, there's Leslie O'Neill. He can't get it. When you get to his feet, he's got to go down with the blocker. That was Petty, number 69. <laughs> then he can't get his hands up. But they hit Tony Davis with the ball and he dropped it. Hill is left, short hose is right. Second down 10. Here's Adler following Green. Adler can run the football. That's a good move there. And is knocked out of bounds a little bit shy of the first down, I believe. Rod Brown came over. James Ham was pursuing him all the way, number 40. We talk so much about John Clayton. Now, this time he is not blocking on Harding. He's leading the play. Take a look at it. He's going out on Adams, the linebacker. Drain is also there. Now, watch Adler. I think he missed the handoff to Drain. He was supposed to hand the ball to Drain. Drain goes through with a block. There's a missed tackle by Yancey, 48 downfield. And then Adler gets down. It's third and two. That was a nice pickup by the quarterback. Did you see how far they had to run to block the linebackers, Adams and Munger? They had to, they had to run a passel to get to them to make the block. Very good point, Jim, that because those linebackers are off so far, once you get through the defensive lineman, you've got five yards of running room. Third down on a couple. Adler, that's right. He's tucked in the backfield. And that is win 
Wendell Yancey, the sophomore cornerback out of Dallas, Texas, who made the big play. Jim, that time Adler comes down the line of scrimmage. All he had to do was keep the ball. He picks up the first down. He pitched too soon. And when he did that, Yancey, they're all sitting out on the outside waiting on it. We're going to punt. No field goal. That's right. Wellerhan is coming in, standing back on his own 49. Now he is supposed to have a very, very strong leg. Bobby Riley goes deep. Kick it over here to the left hand side of the field. Nobody will ever touch it. Whoops. High snap. Poops. Poochie. Let's see if that gets in or they can down it before it does get in. They're going to be able to down it. They're going to let it get inside the five yard line. Don't let it get away from you now. <laughs> Had enough people down there for a committee meeting. 1.37 to go. Oklahoma State is in the hole, but leads 10-7 first half. ESPN Saturday Night Football has come to Stillwater, Oklahoma. We've got one going here. Oklahoma State number seven in the nation, holding on to a three-point lead in the last minute and a half of the first half. On their own one-yard line, that's the tailback. And that is Thomas, who is back into the ball game. First quarter, Roach hit a 25-yard field goal after Burdett had missed one to make it Oklahoma State three to nothing. And later, Burdett missed yet another. But after a 96-yard drive, Drain took it in, and Missouri took the lead at seven to three. And then there was an 80-yard drive, and Crawford on the second attempt dove over into the end zone. And that's where we are right now, 10-7 Oklahoma State. Two tight ends for the Cowboys with a minute to go. In the half, second down about eight. Thomas is hit right there. Good play. And getting up after that good play is Gary Justice, number 94. And time has been called by Missouri on third down and eight. They'd like to bottle him up, get the ball near midfield if they can. A reminder, we've been giving you some of the scores, some of the upsets, but at halftime, we're going to be going back to our Sports Center at ESPN for a complete update of all the scores and highlights coming up at halftime. So stay with us. Plus, we'll have some halftime entertainment from the Oklahoma State Marching Band, all 220 strong. I can't say enough about Rusty Hill, Jared, about Marlon Adler, the way they have played tonight. They have been nearly perfect and they have had some big plays dropped on them by the receivers. I think the offensive game plan by both teams the, the mixture of the run and pass has kept the defense in a problem. I said now that if Missouri is going to win this football game defensively they're going to have to win it but it, it looks like the offense is doing very well. 10-7 game at halftime is a defensive football game. Third down and eight. That's not halftime yet. Not yet. 58 seconds to go. And Missouri's hoping they get a chance for one more field goal attempt at least if they can battle them up here and, and make Cooper kick out of the end zone. Who knows what might happen? Timmons is your fullback. Seldom carries the ball. Thomas is your tailback. And Zachary's in there in a power eye as the third back. And that's Tom. Nope, it's kept by Hilger, and he throws intended for Zachary incomplete. And now it's fourth down, and that stops the clock after just five seconds. After five seconds, they took nearly nothing off the clock, and that plays right into the hands of Missouri, which should get the ball at about midfield. And it also saves a timeout time for Missouri. And you're going to th they were throwing that play, the last man in the backfield, and there were three people back there with Zachary, and he came out in the pattern. The linebacker was right with him. No place to go. That's Andy Hill. He's standing in the territory of Oklahoma State at about their 41. The youngster Cooper, a freshman, from the end of his own end zone. They've got Edmund coming. He gets the ball away. No flags, but a great punt as Hill is backed all the way up to a fair catch inside his own 45. I told you he was at the 43 waiting for the kick, and the freshman Cooper got it to the 43 of Missouri. And the reason, now take a look at Cooper here. The only thing you think about down here is get the ball away. There are some people are going to be blocked into him, but that time Hill, Andy Hill, he singled, signaled for a fair catch. They're just rolling in after blocks. You can see it down there. That's, that's no problem. He did a good job of acting, but Hill did the smart thing because he knew the rush was on. Ten men are going. He had no blockers. They're going to get the ball in good field position, and they saved the timeout by the pass on third down by Oklahoma State. All right, 45 seconds to go in the half. There's your score. Here's Adler back to throw. Adler has the time and has his man over here falling out of bounds is Tony Davis, stopping the clock at the 45. That gives him the first down, takes six seconds off the clock, and the clock is stopped. I like this throwing to the tight ends on both sides. 
Many times they're forgotten in the college game, but not here tonight. Jim, they've got a fifth defensive back in. They had Webb in there as one of the defensive backs. Now they're bringing Williams in along with Hudson. There's Adler. Got the time and on. There's Davis. Get out of bounds and he does. Sounds like I'm rooting, but we're just looking for a good football game played with few mistakes. Moore knocks him out of bounds and stops the clock with 33 seconds to go. 10 to 7, Oklahoma State. Missouri trying to get on the board if they can. Jim, I know it's dangerous, but I'll tell you something right now. If they will throw the ball in the middle of the field, get one of those tight ends in the middle of the field, it'll be open. David Payton is in as a wide receiver on the left side. Adler flag is down. He is sacked, and it could be that also there is a holding penalty on the play. And that was Leslie O'Neill. Looks like he's picked up his eighth sack. They will not take this penalty because they lost 10 yards on the play. It'll make it third down. Down doesn't make any difference. But they will take they will just take the play and not the penalty. That's what it is. That moves him back with only 27 seconds to go. Right of your screen, Leslie O'Neill, 99. Let's yes. take a look at him. He just throws away the right guard, and that's uh, Luella, or excuse me, the left guard, which is Petty, and he's in the backfield for the sack. Petty's not used to that. He's an ex-Marine. He is 23 years old and a freshman. He was in the Marines for a number of years as a master sergeant. Now Peyton, the freshman, goes way out to the right. There's Adler back looking for the big play. Puts it deep. And it is intercepted by Hines. His fourth interception still on his feet. Flag goes down. Two flags go down, and so does Adam Hines with nine seconds left in the half. And Pat Jones was almost at the hash mark on the field off the bench to see what was going on. Well, there's a clipping penalty down around the five. Won't make any difference. There's nine seconds left to go. Oklahoma State will just sit on the ball. I said throw the ball down the middle, but not that deep. They were sitting. If you throw the ball about a 20-yard pattern in the middle of the field, it was open. And the man that was open was Andy Hill, number 84, going downfield. Take a look at it now. Here's Adler. Arlen Adler is going to just try to air it out. He's looking at Hill here, but now he's coming back to his right. The ball is like a punt. It's just sitting there. There's Hill that he's throwing the ball to. But had, if he'd have thrown the ball about 15 yards shorter, Hill was there. There's the clip that we saw at the five, half the distance of the goal line. This run back by Hines doesn't make any difference. So nine seconds to go. There's Pat Jones, 37 years old. When uh, Jimmy Johnson went on down to Miami, the players got together and got up a petition right away and said, we want Pat Jones as our head coach. And about 48 hours later, they acceded to it. Now, Rusty Hilger takes the ball, and this should run out the clock right here. Everybody glad to get off the field. Little to choose between them. Missouri's missed two field goals. Oklahoma has made their field goal. Each man, each team has scored a touchdown on a one-yard dive by a back. And at the end of the half, Oklahoma State favored and going to a bowl, leading Missouri by the score of 10 to 7. Now remember, Sports Center's coming up from our studios in Bristol.